Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to today's webinar hosted by the American Academy of Pediatrics and HealthyChildren.org, the official AAP website for parents. We'll be discussing toddler development and the benefits of active play. We have a few pieces of housekeeping before we begin. First, I wanted to give you a heads up that we're using new webinar system, so please forgive us if we experience any technical difficulties. This webinar is being recorded, so if you lose connectivity for any reason, you will be able to watch it and listen to the archived webinar in a week or two. Hopefully we won't experience too many glitches. If we can help you with any technical issues during the webinar, send an email to pevett, P-E-V-E-T-T -E at aap.org, or send a chat message within the webinar. If you've joined us by computer, you can activate chat by clicking on the speech bubble in the bottom center of your screen, and a chat window will open in the lower right-hand corner. If you've joined us by a mobile device, tap the person-shaped icon for Apple or the chat bubble for Android. We'll have time at the end of the webinar for a question and answer session. To ask a question, please use the chat function. Again, activated by clicking on the speech bubble or the person-shaped icon. You can send in your questions at any time, and Dr. Zachary will get to as many as she can at the end of the presentation. I would now like to introduce our host, Dr. Ann Zachary. She is a pediatric occupational therapist, child development specialist, and assistant professor and chair of occupational therapy at the University of Tennessee Health Science Center. She's the mother of three and the author of two books published by the American Academy of Pediatrics. Retro Baby and her newest book, Retro Toddler, More Than 100 Old School Activities to Boost Development. Dr. Zachary, I'll turn the mic over to you now. Hi, Sarah, can you hear me? We can hear you when you're live. Okay, great. Thank you so much, and thank you to everyone who has joined us today. As toddler parents, you know that this stage can be both magical and challenging. One of the points of toddler parent tension can be screen time. As a pediatric occupational therapist with more than 25 years of experience and being a mother of three, I have seen firsthand how the use of technology can negatively impact a child's development. Excessive screen time and electronics can lead to obesity, poor sleep, attention problems, behavior issues, and poor performance in school. If screen time is a hindrance to child development, one of the most important things you can do as a parent to support healthy development is to encourage active play. Toddlers need to engage in active play to foster the development of their language, social, emotional, and motor skills. Play also provides opportunities for children to express feelings, make decisions, and use their imagination. And these are skills that will last a lifetime. So this afternoon, I'm going to offer suggestions for specific activities that you can engage in with your toddlers. And we'll also discuss what kind of developmental benefits this play can encourage. Gross motor skills are the ability to control the large muscle groups of the body that are used during activities such as standing, walking, jumping, and climbing. It's important for toddlers to have plenty of opportunities to be active and experiment with their motor skills so that they can strengthen those larger muscles. Active play in open spaces is extremely important, so limit the amount of clutter in your home and yard whenever possible, and that will give them the opportunity to stretch, run, and jump. Here's an overview of some gross motor milestones. Keep in mind that these are general and they will vary from toddler to toddler. By 12 months, most toddlers can pull into a standing position. By 18 months, they can run but fall easily. By 24 months, they can kick large balls. And at 30 months, they can jump with both feet off the ground. Around 36 months, your toddler may be able to balance on one foot for several seconds. 
core strength is um, key to gross motor skills, and there are lots of fun and easy ways to build your toddler's core strength. Here are some of those activities. Wheelbarrow walking. Help your child lie on her stomach. Show her how to push up with her hands as you hold her by the knees so that she is in a push-up position. Encourage her to take several steps forward by walking with her hands. You may need to demonstrate this ahead of time. A fun way to motivate her to move forward is to place a favorite stuffed animal three or four feet in front of her. Cheer her on by telling her, go for it. Let's all crawl is another activity. Interactive games that involve crawling on the hands and knees are wonderful. Devise races to retrieve a toy across the room or construct an obstacle course out of sofa cushions and pillows for your little one to crawl through. For a real adventure, get on your hands and knees and join your toddler in the fun. Fly like an airplane. Show your toddler how to lie on her stomach on a soft, flat surface and lift her arms, head, and legs, just as if she's in a flying position like an airplane. Encourage her to hold that position as she flies to different places. Participate in the activity alongside your child and you'll be strengthening your core as well. Rock the boat. On a carpeted floor, position yourself with you on your back with your knees bent and your arms wrapped snugly around your shins. Slowly rock your body back and forth and encourage your toddler to imitate what you are doing. She may need your assistance to get her body into the position, so be prepared to help her. And once she has the hang of it, sing a song while she rocks back and forth. Switch from a song with a slow beat to one with a fast beat and encourage her to rock to the rhythm. Rock, rock, rock. Having a ball. Hold your toddler at her hips while she's positioned on her stomach over an ottoman or a firm pillow and instruct her to toss the ball at an empty container. This activity is beneficial for core strength and it also strengthens the shoulder and arm muscles. Practicing your toddler's gross motor skills offers the whole family an opportunity to be active. Research shows that many children younger than age five are not as physically active as they should be. And when mom and dad get actors active, toddlers will want to. Children's activity levels are directly linked to how active their parents are. So keep in mind that the more physically active your child is earlier in life, the more likely she is to be physically active when she's older. And that will help decrease her risk of being overweight. Here are a few activities you can try to promote movement and develop coordination. The first activity is called bottle bowling. So you just take six to eight um, 16 ounce clean, empty plastic milk bottles, find a clear space and arrange them as if they were bowling pins. Then show your little one how to roll a large beach ball to knock them over. You can make the game more challenging by using a smaller ball. Feely feet. Make a textured obstacle course for your child to walk on. You can use different fabrics and other materials. As he steps on the various textures, ask him to tell you how each one of them feels. Is it bumpy? Is it scratchy? This is a wonderful way for him to experience sensory feedback through his feet during movement. The third activity is on the road again. On a large poster board or large piece of book butcher paper, draw a simple neighborhood with several roads and houses on it. Be sure to tape it to the floor. Show your child how to push a toy car on the roads while he's in a hands and knees position. Be sure to include stop signs and parking places so that he can learn when to stop and go and how to park a car. He'll love this. Mommy says, we are all familiar with the game of Simon Says. Well, Mommy Says is an amusing take on that popular children's game. Here are some fun directives to include when playing this game with your toddler. Mommy says, flack your wings like a bird. Mommy says, walk like an elephant. 
Mommy says, act like a monkey. Hop on one foot. If your child hops on one foot, remember to remind her that she, you didn't start with Mommy Says, so it's time to start the game over. You can also alter this game by saying Daddy Says or Grandma or Grandpa Says. As your child's gross motor skills mature, safety considerations become more important. Be sure your house is appropriately child-proofed. All poisons, such as medicines, cosmetics, and cleaning supplies must be stored out of sight and out of reach. With tall furniture like dressers and bookshelves and heavy appliances like TVs, be sure to secure them to the wall with straps or screws. Keep a close eye on your toddler in motion. Her coordination isn't fully developed yet, and bumps and falls will be frequent. For more childproofing help, visit www.healthychildren.org. Fine motor skills are the ability to coordinate the hands and fingers when manipulating small objects. Fine motor skills and vision actually work together to coordinate movement. Eye-hand coordination is important in daily living skills like feeding and dressing, and those lead to more advanced tasks like writing and cutting. Here's an overview of some fine motor milestones. Again, keep in mind that these will vary from toddler to toddler. By 12 months, most toddlers can place large objects into a container. By 18 months, they can stack two blocks. At 24 months, they can remove socks, coats, and hats, and likely will do so when you least want them to. By 30 months, they can string large beads. And at 36 months, they can work a three to four piece puzzle. Gaining strength and dexterity for fine motor skills are extremely important for school readiness. So here are some activities that will promote their development. The first activity is called pinch and place. Squeezing clothespins and placing them on the edge of a small box or container is a wonderful way to strengthen the tiny muscles in your child's hands. This is also a great activity to promote eye-hand coordination and dexterity. Take several small pieces of colorful duct tape and wrap each piece around the end of a clothespin pin, and place a strip of each color of tape on the edge of the container. Now you'll have a fun color matching game that your child will enjoy. Finger painting play. Tape a big piece of butcher paper to an outside wall in a garage or on a deck. Have your child use her index finger to imitate and copy basic lines and shapes with fingertip, your, the finger paint. And you can give her cues to um, draw a line down, draw a line across, or circle around, so those verbal cues will be helpful. Spray away. Fill a small spray bottle with water and encourage your child to help you clean surfaces such as the kitchen table. This action of squeezing the trigger will strengthen the muscles in your child's index finger, and he'll be excited that he's helping you out. Popping fun. Show your toddler how to pop bubble wrap used for packaging. This is a great way to strengthen the thumb and index finger, and it's also fun to hear the pop, pop, pop. That sound will surely bring a smile to your child's face and maybe even elicit a giggle. You can't go wrong with tongs. Another unique way to address fine motor skills is to have your child play with a set of child-sized tongs. These are typically available in educational and therapy stores, and there are a variety of ways to play with tongs that your toddler will enjoy. Opening and closing the tongs strengthens those tiny muscles in the hands and also improves dexterity. You can have your child use the tongs to play small blocks into various containers, and encourage her to count the blocks as she picks them up and places them on top of each other as quickly as possible. 
she will learn about numbers while also gaining strength and coordination in her hands. Now here are some more activities, uh, dress for success. Playing dress up is an opportunity for your child to gain arm and hand control. So provide her with a variety of hats, colorful clothing, and fun accessories. You can visit your local thrift store and shop for several in inexpensive outfits. Just make sure that the clothing pieces have buttons, snaps, or zippers that are securely fastened and no drawstrings or de decorations that could be pulled off. Start with large fasteners and once your child masters the larger ones, progress to the small ones. Playing dress up encourages pretend play and that is so wonderful for your child's imagination. Play-Doh play is the next activity. Manipulating Play-Doh is excellent for fine, refining fine motor skills. So you can have your child form small balls using the on, only the thumb, index, and mi middle fingers of one hand and to try to make the balls as smooth as possible. It's also fun to roll the clay into a long snake. Once the snake is complete, show your toddler how to pinch the body of the snake from the head all the way to the tip of the tail. This will be beneficial for her pincer grasp. Now make sure you keep a watchful eye on your child so that she does not put any Play-Doh in her mouth. Yuck. Tearing it up. Believe it or not, tearing paper into small pieces is a good activity that strengthens the small muscles in your child's hands. It also gives her practice using her two hands together. So have her tear several different types of colorful paper, such as construction paper, tissue paper, which is thinner, and index cards, which are firmer. With your help, she can glue the paper pieces to a large piece of cardstock to make her very own artistic masterpiece. Be sure to display her artwork to show her how proud you are of her hard work. The next activity is called up and down game. Show your toddler how to stand while holding on to a low surface such as the edge of a sofa. Place several favorite toys on the floor and then encourage her to squat down and retrieve one of the toys. Then have her return to a standing position and place the toy on the couch. Tell her that she's going up, up, up and down, 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 just like an elevator. Encourage her to repeat the process until she has retrieved all the toys and put them on top of the sofa. This is a nice activity that will address your toddler's leg strength and balance. Just my size. A child's size desk or table and chairs are nice to have when your toddler is engaged in fine motor play. When seated, your child's feet should be flat on the floor, no dangling feet, and her elbows should be at or slightly above the level of the table or desktop. If she's positioned well, she will have more stability and that allows her to focus on the task at hand, such as coloring, and she will be able to use her arms and her hands more efficiently. Please, don't feel pressure to purchase expensive toys to promote gross and fine motor skill development. As you can see from these simple, intuitive, and inexpensive activities that we've just walked through, it is not necessary to spend money on toys that light up and make noise. Back to basics is the key. Keep in mind that your child shouldn't be overwhelmed with too many choices. So unclutter your play space, pack some toys away for a month or two, and then you can ro rotate them back out at a later point in time your toddler will actually feel like she has new toys. While we've just walked through planned activities that you can do with your child, as parents it's also critical that we provide ample time and opp opportunities for our children to play. And there are three types of play that evolved during childhood. Solitary play is when a young toddler plays and explores independently. During this first stage of play, your toddler will be so engrossed in what he is doing, he won't even notice what's going on around him. 
parallel play starts occurring at about two years of age. Your toddler begins to play alongside other children and may be aware of them now, but the children typically don't interact at this age. Social play, which is also called cooperative play, begins around three and a half um, years of age. And this social play is interactive, so it involves children collaborating, taking turns, problem solving, and acting out pretend scenarios. <clears throat> In addition to the types of play, there are also different forms of play, physical, constructive, and pretend. All three of these forms are important for child development. Physical play offers opportunity for movement and exercise. It often takes place outdoors and includes running in open spaces, playing on the playground, and riding bikes. Physical play is how your, how your child will learn to love being physically active. Studies show that the benefits of outdoor play and physical play include a reduced risk of nearsightedness, improved cognitive skills such as increased attentiveness and improved working memory, better cardiovascular health and a healthier weight, fewer conduct problems, better peer relationships, and improve sleep, and we all know how important sleep is. Constructive play is more organized and it's more goal-directed than physical play. It involves building and creating. So when your toddler manipulates materials to build something new, that would be considered constructive play. The benefits of constructive play include learning directional concepts like beside, on top of, over and under. Use fine motor skills and the, the use of fine motor and manipulative skills are also benefits. Learning how to entertain your child with self direct her, herself with self directed and independent play, excuse me. And it will also enhance visual perceptual skills. These are skills that show us how the brain makes sense of the information that the eyes take in. For example, just recognizing a basic shape. Promote creativity. Pretend play doesn't occur until around 18 to 25 months old. And during pretend play, toddlers actively use their imaginations to take on roles. So you can promote creativity in your child using these suggestions. First, allow for mistakes. Also, ask your child open-ended questions. Try to have a wide array of arts and crafts supplies available. And most importantly, don't constantly entertain your toddler. Remember, boredom stimulates creativity. Play is also critical to the development of social skills. When playing with peers, your child's child has to follow simple rules. They have to be adaptable communicate well, and make their needs known. Your child will also learn empathy, how to regulate behavior, and how to resolve conflict in appropriate manner. These are all important social skills. So if you only take a few things from this discussion, I'd like you to remember that it's simple, fun, and very inexpensive to boost your toddler's development. With your attention, enthusiasm, and items that you already have around the house, you can engage with your toddler and equip them to succeed in life. Oh, and remember to put down your phone and turn off the television. Thank you so much for listening. I think it might be time for questions now. Thank you for all of this great information, Dr. Zachary. I know I'm gonna follow some of these suggestions at home with my 15-month-old. We do have some time now for questions. If you haven't already done so, please use the chat window to send questions to Dr. Zachary. She will try to respond to the questions in the order they arrive. However, she may not be able to answer all questions. While you submit your questions, I'd just like to remind you that you're invited to register for HealthyChildren.org to receive our twice monthly e-newsletter, a personalized homepage, and special offers. And don't forget to follow HealthyChildren.org on Facebook, Twitter, and Pinterest.
We hope you enjoyed today's webinar. I'll turn the mic over to Dr. Zachary now for your questions. Keep on submitting those questions and Dr. Zachary will jump in when she's ready with some answers. Okay, I'm ready. Thank you for all of your questions. I'd like to start with um, this question, that my three and a half year old has trouble sticking with a coloring page and let me see, he's in preschool, he draws one line on the page and has zero interest in learning to use a pencil, trace letters, etc. Let's see, I would say don't worry about using the um, pencil, crayons, paper at this age, just pull out some basic finger paint. That's much more engaging and children tend to really enjoy the finger paint um, and it's a sensory experience so you can have them color and um, using the tip of their finger and they get that sensory feedback and it helps hold their attention better because even at this age, even around three and a half, it can be hard to hold a writing utensil or crayon and that can be frustrating for kids. So just try finger paints or shaving cream or something like that for a while. Let's see, here's another question. My toddler doesn't seem interested in the television. Is it okay to have it on in the background since she is not watching? Actually, it's not a great idea to have the television on in the background. The research tells us that what happens is the child will be distracted, so they may not play with their toys that they have in the room. They also um, will interact with you less because you're likely to be looking at the television. And then, unfortunately, there's a lot of violent content on television. and you don't want your child to pick up on that and they, they do pay attention to it. Research tells us that. So here is another question. Would it, oh, <laughs> that's not it. Let's see. What kind of art supplies are best for two-year-olds? Crayons, paints, markers, etc. Well, I actually answered that question. I would go with finger paints and shaving cream on a large sheet of butcher paper. If you do decide to use crayons, break the crayons into small pieces and have the child hold the crayon and it, they'll use only their index, middle, and ring finger, which is a better grasp. Just be sure to keep a close eye on your child with the crayon pieces because they don't need to put any of those in their mouth. My toddler is easily meeting her motor milestones but seems to be falling behind in speech. Should I focus on physical activities when we play because that's what she likes and what she's good at or should I try to redirect the speech activities? I would say both. So the big thing is you want to do something that she's enjoying and she's having fun with so if you're focusing on movement activities, narrate with her along. What are you doing? Why are you doing that? Try to get that language to come out during the fun movement activities. It's much more fun to do that than to just sit and try to get speech out of your child. Um, somebody just asked another good question about anything that's less messy for art ideas. I think uh, one idea that is really fun is you can take shaving cream or hair gel that's colorful and put in a Ziploc bag, zip it up, make sure the air is all out of it, and then get duct tape and seal it, the, the end, opening end with duct tape just to be sure it doesn't open. And then if you place that flat on the table with like a white piece of paper under it, your child can trace shapes and lines and designs and that way their hands won't get messy. But I would still encourage the messy physical play so um, you can try that and see how that works out. Let's see if there's any more questions. 
we have long winters. How can I help gross motor development when we're stuck inside? Well, the, several of the activities that I mentioned are great for indoors earlier the, that I mentioned the obstacle course. So you can take cushions and pillows and blankets and make an obstacle course and have your child crawl through it. Another fun indoor activity is to play something similar to hopscotch. It would not be as advanced as hot, hopscotch for a toddler, but you can put masking tape down on the kitchen floor and make squares or circles or triangles and have your child jump to the, from the square to the triangle or from the triangle to the circle. And that's a great way to um, get your child to get moving and get physically active. And I would suggest joining them if at all possible. That way you can get some movement out too and you're modeling that physical activity for them. I think that's about all of the questions I see. Dr. Zachary, I can see a few more at this end. Would you like me to read a couple? Sure, that would be great. Okay. Um, any recommendations for an 18-month-old? She has a hard time sticking to one activity at a time. That can be challenging, but that's okay. For At 18 months, you wouldn't really expect your child to be able to sit and focus for a long period of time. The one thing that you can do to encourage the attention is to sit with her and prompt her to stay with the task, but don't get too frustrated or anxious because 18 months, their children have a very short attention span, so that is not an unusual at all. Okay, here's another good one. Um, they say, thank you for a great presentation. Do you have any additional uh, tips for toddler twins? Really, it, all of the uh, activities that we've gone over today are great for twins. The kids can do them together. You might need mom and dad to participate in some of the activities to keep them both on task. But overall, I think any of the activities from this webinar or in the book would be great for twins. And then we have um, a kind of a cluster of questions about screen time. So maybe if you could just talk about um, what screen time is okay, what are the uh, recommendations from the American Academy of Pediatrics, and if there any, is any kind of screen time that's beneficial instead of detrimental. Sure, I'll be happy to address that. So I would say that um, based on the recommendations from the American Academy of Pediatrics, the one screen time that is not detrimental is when you um, Skype or Zoom with a family member, and that way your child can see a grandparent or um, someone who's far away and interact socially with them and it's not detrimental to, um, to their development. But I'll talk a little bit more about the recommendations for, um, from the American Academy of Pediatrics as far as screen time. With children under 18 months, you really want to avoid use of screen media other than video chatting as I just mentioned. Now with children 18 to 24 months of age, um, who want, they want that digital media, so choose high quality programming. And you can also watch it with the child and that way you can help them understand what they're seeing. That, that is a, often a, a big challenge because they don't understand what's going on on the screen. And if they don't understand it, it's just not quality time spent. But if you are there to explain what's going on, look, they're doing this or they're doing that, then it will make much more sense to them. I think that's okay. that good. That sounds great. Um, and I think we're just about out of time. Thank you so much, Dr. Zachary, for all of this information. And thank you all for attending. If you'd like to learn more, um, please check out Dr. Zachary's new book, Retro Toddler. Uh, by attending this webinar, you've been entered to win one of 10 free copies, so be sure to check your email to see if you've won. But if you're not selected, you can pick up a copy wherever books are sold. This webinar will be archived, 
we'll send out um, an email and it'll also be posted on the healthychildren.org Facebook page. So you can look for it there and feel free to share it with friends and family. So thank you again, and we hope to see you at the next HealthyChildren.org webinar.